Hey guys, Alexander here, and in this video we will be covering deriving the maximum likelihood estimates and estimators for the gamma distribution. To start off, let's remind ourselves of the probability density function of a gamma distributed random variable. If x follows the gamma distribution with a shape parameter of alpha and a rate parameter of lambda, then the probability that the random variable x is equal to in your realization, which is lowercase x, is given by lambda to the power of alpha, e to the negative lambda x, x to the power of alpha minus 1, and all of this divided by alpha minus 1 factorial, which is also the same as gamma of alpha, where this is the gamma function. So firstly, we will need the likelihood function. And the notation that I'll use is just a capital L with the parameters that we are interested in. Alpha, the shape parameter, and lambda, the rate parameter. This is defined as the product of the individual probability density functions for all of the n um, samples of that random variable. So we have a product from i is equal to 1 to n of the probability that x i is equal to lowercase realization of itself, x i lowercase. And that's equal to the product from i is equal to 1 to n of lambda to the power of alpha e to the negative lambda x i times x i to the power of alpha minus 1 over the gamma of alpha. Now, there's an important distinction that we need to make here. If we're talking about the estimator, then we need to use the capitals to indicate that we're talking about the random variables. So we use all these x i. If we're talking about the estimate, then we're going to use the lowercase or these this notation, the xi, because those are then values that we have from our data that we can go and plug in to actually calculate the estimate. So let's get started. Something that's very helpful in this case is to use the log likelihood function. So we use the natural logarithm, the log to the base e of this, or we can simply use the, just like this, of alpha and lambda, so that we can say that this is the log likelihood function. Just to make our lives a little bit easier. And all this is equivalent to is we're taking the natural logarithm of all of this. What we are going to do then is we're going to multiply out inside the natural logarithm and see what can we do to make things simpler. So lambda to the power of alpha, if we multiply it n times, it's just going to be lambda to the power of n alpha. e to the negative lambda xi is simply going to become e to the negative lambda, the summation of xi. This xi to the power of alpha minus 1, this is going to be product from i is equal to 1 to n of xi and all of this to the power of alpha minus 1 because this is the same as saying x1 to the power of alpha minus 1 times x2 to the power of alpha minus 1 all the way up to xn and we know that we can just factor them in to the power of alpha minus 1. And lastly over here at the bottom we have gamma of alpha which is constant with respect to i, so it's just going to be gamma of alpha multiplied by itself n times, so we will be left with gamma of alpha to the power of n. And now we can go simplify this natural logarithm even further. We know that if we have the ln of or the natural logarithm of a times b, it's equivalent to the, the natural logarithm of a plus the natural logarithm of b. And similarly for division, a divided by b is going to be equal to the natural log of a plus the natural log of minus the 
natural log of d. So let's use these rules together to simplify this. So what we will then arrive at is that we have n alpha times the natural log of lambda, which is this first term down, and the natural log of, of the e, of the number e, we're going to be simply left with negative L lambda times the summation of the xi. This product over here, it's going to be plus alpha minus one times the natural log of the product of these guys. And lastly, we are, will be we will be left with negative the log of gamma of alpha to the power of n. And to simplify this further, we can go write it with a bit of a sh sharper. We have n alpha natural logarithm, logarithm of lambda negative lambda times the summation of xi plus alpha minus one times the summation from i is equal to one to n of the natural logarithm of the xi. And this is because if we have the ln of x1 times x2 times x3 all the way up to xn, which is just the summation of each of the, the logarithm of each of the individual xi. And this one, we bring the exponent down, negative n times the ln of gamma of alpha. And there we have it. This is the log likelihood function of, the, of our gamma distribution. So the log likelihood function, and we are interested in the, with the formulation alpha for the shape and lambda for the rate parameters. So now we need to go take the derivatives of the log likelihood function with respect to lambda and then alpha so that we can actually go and derive the estimators and then end up deriving the estimates. So let's start off with lambda. So we're going to take the partial derivative of the log likelihood function with respect to lambda. So this is going to be equal to n alpha. The derivative of the natural logarithm of lambda is equal to one over lambda. Over here, we just have lambda to the power one, so we will be left with negative the summation of the xi. And as we can see in the rest of this derivative, there is no, no, there are no terms involving lambda. So that's that. So this is our first derivative. We need to equate it to zero so that we can solve for where this derivative is equal to zero. Equate to zero. We find then that we have n alpha over lambda negative the summation of xi must be equal to zero. This means that n alpha divided by lambda is equal to the summation of xi. And this finally implies that lambda is equal to n alpha over the summation of xi. This is the maximum likelihood estimator. Estimator of lambda. So if we want the exact estimate, then we say lambda hat, which is the maximum likelihood estimate. This is going to be equal to n times alpha hat, because we also have to estimate alpha. So n times alpha hat divided by the summation of xi. And the summation of xi is just n x bar. And that means that we are left with alpha hat over x bar. This is the maximum likelihood estimate of lambda. Great, so now we have derived the maximum likelihood estimator and estimate of lambda. Let's go to deriving the maximum likelihood estimator and estimate for alpha. This is a bit more tricky and involved, and we can't exactly find a closed form solution for it, but we will we will deal with it when that when that when we arrive there. So to get started, we start off exactly as, as before. Partial derivative of the log likelihood function with respect to alpha in this case, it's going to be equal to partial derivative. So we our terms involving alpha are over here, over here, 
and over here. So there are three terms that involve alpha. So to get started, we're taking the partial derivative of n alpha times lamb, uh, the log, natural log of lambda. So that's going to leave us with n times the natural log of lambda. Next, we're going to work with alpha times the summation from i is 1 to n of the natural logarithm of xi. And since this is just an alpha term to the power of 1 over here, we are just left with plus the summation from i is 1 to n of the natural logarithm of the xi. And lastly, we have negative n times the natural logarithm of gamma of alpha. Now, the derivative of this is equal to natural, the derivative of the natural logarithm of gamma of alpha is 1 over gamma of alpha multiplied by the derivative of gamma of alpha. And this is a very, very important result over here. This is called the digamma function the digamma function. And it is, a, it is through this function that we can actually go and solve and, and figure out the, the maximum likelihood estimate of alpha, but we need to know that the derivative of the gamma function divided by the gamma function is the digamma function. And you will typically not see this in most undergraduate level courses because this is not what, we, what they really want you to see or to be able to do, they just want you to know that if you use the log likelihood functions or the likelihood functions, you can arrive at the maximum likelihood estimators and estimates. As we go on, we see that this is, so the partial derivative of the log likelihood function is equal to n ln of lambda plus the summation from i is equal to 1 to n of the natural logarithm of xi negative n times the digamma function uh, with respect to alpha. But we've already derived the result for lambda hat. So let's go plug that into here so that we can go and figure out the maximum likelihood estimate of um, alpha hat, of alpha. So we want alpha hat. So we plug lambda hat in and we know that lambda hat is equal to alpha hat over x bar. That means that we have times the ln of alpha hat over x bar plus the summation from i is equal to 1 to n, the ln of xi, negative n times the digamma function. Okay, now we can further simplify this. We arrive at n times, and this should be since we're now working with the um, Estimates, there should be a lowercase x, since we're interested in the maximum likelihood estimate. So we have n times the ln of alpha hat, negative n times the natural logarithm of x bar, plus the summation from i is equal to 1 to n, the natural logarithm of the xi, and then we subtract n times the digamma function. So if we note, we see that there is an n term, in all of these, so we can factor out an n out of this entire equation. So we arrive with n times one of alpha hat minus the digamma alpha hat, alpha hat, and this is then subtracted by negative the ln of x bar, and then we have this plus the summation. Uh, from i is 1 to n of the natural logarithm of xi, so we're going to divide by an n through there, so it's plus 1 over n times the summation from i is equal to 1 to n of the natural logarithm of the xi. And if we notice, this is just the same as saying ln of x bar, the mean of the natural logarithms of the xi, not the natural logarithm of x bar, once we've done this, we need to equate it to zero. So when we equate this derivative to zero, we see that we can just divide the n out. So divide by n, divide by n. 
So we're left with zero is equal to natural logarithm of alpha hat minus di gamma of alpha hat negative the natural logarithm of x bar plus the natural logarithm of x bar. And that's the result for, that's as far as we can go by hand in terms of deriving the um, maximum likelihood estimate of the shape parameter alpha. So this is the function that we're going to use to go and derive alpha hat. Well, how do we do that? Well, we use numerical methods to determine alpha hat. because we need to go and use the di gamma function and that's not something that we can easily do by hand so we need numerical methods okay so that's how we derive lambda hat and alpha hat or arrive at as good as a solution we can for alpha hat using the log likelihood function of the gamma distributed of the gamma distribution thank you very much for watching this video and stay tuned well, because in the next video, I will be showing you how we can actually go and derive alpha hat, a solution for it, a numerical solution using R. We will use the, the programming language R and we will derive the value for alpha hat in the next video. Thank you for watching. Work Commander out.